Welcome to Hustle and Pro Season 2, talking sports in Frisco from youth to pro. Now here's your host, Kelly Walker. Today on Hustle and Pro, we have a homecoming story. Eddie Munjoma is a local. He came up through the FC Dallas Academy system, headed to play for his dream school, SMU, and just signed a pro contract with none other than FC Dallas. Hi, Eddie. Hi. Thanks for coming in. I'm excited to get to know you. Of course. Thanks for having me. So let's do a couple icebreakers off the top, and then we'll get into it. So who's your favorite athlete of all time? <sighs> that's, a, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, I would obviously probably lean more towards soccer. Um, you can give me a non-soccer and a soccer answer if you want. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. Um, let's see. All time. I'm a big Muhammad Ali fan. Um, I mean, I think everything he's done for just his sport and just his character in general speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I didn't. I wasn't around during his prime of his career, but sure. I got the chance to like watch a couple of his clips when he was, you know, doing the amazing things that he did. Um, so definitely all time, I'd say Muhammad Ali. As far as soccer, that's also a tough one. We get a lot of Messi in here sometimes. So, is do you like Messi? I do, okay. but I might be a little different. I probably prefer Ronaldo a little more. Mm -hmm. um, I really appreciate just his work ethic and just his drive to always want to be the best. Cristiano Ronaldo. Yes, yes. Cristiano Ronaldo. Yes. yes. Um, yeah, I've probably been a fan of his for, I'd say, six, seven years now. Um, but I mean, I also love Messi. Messi's there. I mean, he's amazing as well. Sure. They kind of go back and forth, right? Yeah, they play of off course. of each other. Of course. What about superstitions? So do you personally have game day superstition or anything that's interesting to tell us about? Uh, I mean, I think in general, like, I don't know, I try to keep a similar like schedule of everything I do. Um, I want to make sure like I eat breakfast depending on what time the game is, like mm -hmm. let's say the game is around like six or seven. Um, I want to make sure I have my breakfast by like nine-ish. Uh, and then I want to have a snack before I eat kind of a pregame meal around 3.30. Um, I guess when it comes to superstitions, I'm kind of like really specific with like the times. Uh-huh. That your, I want your, your schedule. Right, yeah. Um, is that just for consistency purposes so that you don't get thrown off and your body's ready? Yeah, and I think just for my personal state of mind, like I want to make sure I did this at this time and so on and so forth. So I guess that's kind of my main superstition, just kind of making sure I keep uh, the schedule that I want. Yeah. Okay, what about sports movies? What is your favorite sports movie? <sighs> it's another tough one. Mm -hmm. um, I'll do one that's not soccer and then one that is soccer. Okay. Um, a non-soccer one I really liked, uh, Like Mike. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah, I have not seen it. You haven't seen it? No, I haven't. It's it's really good. I'd highly recommend. Okay. Um, yeah, I watched it the first for the first time when I was really, really young, but it's just an instant classic to me. Like anytime it's on, like I'm always gonna Okay, I'll go watch find it. it. I'll yeah. put it on my watch list. No, I definitely I definitely recommend. Um and then soccer, there's a series uh goal. Um I think the first one's called Goal, the Dream Begins, and then the second one is goal to living the dream, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably one of the better soccer movies I've watched. Is it a movie or is it a following a team like documentary style? No, it's a movie. Okay. It's like it's a fake story about a player that uh, grows up in L.A. Um, he ends up going to England playing for Newcastle. And then in the second movie, he transfers from Newcastle to go to Real Madrid. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I'd probably say that's probably one of the better soccer movies I've watched. Okay, well, now I have three to add to my watch yeah. list. You, you surprised me. I don't know those, so <laughs> thank you. Uh -huh, of course. Okay, let's start um, with <clears throat> the genuine love of soccer that you have. So I've been kind of reading some of the things you've put out there that your dad coached you from, like, age 4 to 11. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me about him and how kind of he supported you and how much you love this sport. Yeah, um, I mean, it speaks for itself. My dad's probably one of the biggest influences as far as um, me playing soccer. Uh, yeah, he started coaching me when I was four. Um, the very first team he coached me was called the Ninjas, actually. Uh, we were pretty, I mean, it was just a local team in McKinney. We were kind of just messing around. As we were classmates in school and then also just formed a team outside to play in, like, the local, um, like, recreational league. 
Um, but yeah, he coached me. He was obviously the first one to introduce me to the game. Um, he has a background of playing as well. Um, so, I mean, he's obviously been super hard on me, um, which has at times been, you know, kind of annoying, kind of frustrating. But at the same time, it's obviously helped me to get to the point I am now. Right, so. you need it at the same time. Did he grow up playing? So you, you were born in McKinney, and you grew up around here, right? Dallas? I was born in Dallas. Oh, Dallas. Um, but, yeah, I did grow up in McKinney. Okay, I moved to Dallas probably when I was three years old. Did your dad play around this area? No, my dad's actually of African descent. Okay. Um, he played in Zimbabwe which is um, also my home country. Um, and he actually played with, like, the U-17 national team, U-18 national wow. team. So, like, he has, you know, that background yeah. of playing at a high level. He followed in his footsteps. Yeah, for sure. That's amazing. Okay, so you earned a spot at SMU. So mm -hmm. I've, I've heard or I've read your letter to SMU, and that's awesome. I love how much you have the passion about being there. Um, and you just finished up there. Yes, Not I did. Not all that long ago. Yes. So you had four successful years there, right? Yes. So one of the things that, so I read that you were All-American First College Soccer News in just 2019, like that's just yesterday. Um, but then you won the Herman, okay, Mac Herman, is that right? Yes, Mac right? Herman. 2019 yes. Mac Herman, you were a semifinalist. Yes. Okay, so none other than Luchi Gonzalez, your now head coach, won that back mm -hmm. in 2001. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Uh -huh. um, have you gotten to talk to Lucci about that? Uh, no, I actually haven't. I actually haven't. But I mean, once I got the, uh, once I got, or once I found out that I was a uh, Herman semifinalist, it was definitely one of the things I thought about. Um, just the last person to actually win the Herman was at SMU as well. And um, I don't know, during, like, during the way the season was going for us at the time, like, I wasn't really thinking about, um, am I going to win the Herman? I was just more focused on us doing well and obviously trying to achieve our goal of winning the national championship. So I wasn't really thinking much about, um, am I actually going to win this thing? But, I mean, it is pretty cool that the last person who won it was Lucci. And yeah. I mean, now it's he's very my head cool. Coach, and now so. he's, yeah, that's really, I think that's so neat. It's part of that whole homecoming story that I love. Mm -hmm. So I hear there's this sweet 16 overtime moment that you talk about. So yeah. tell me about that. Oh boy, that, I mean, I get, I've, I've been asked to tell that story a lot. And well, hold on. I said overtime. I know it's really uh -huh. stoppage time. And I yeah. don't know. I, I don't know well, what you call it, it actually, in, in college level soccer. The thing is, yeah, with college, there is like that overtime okay, when so a game is tied. Okay. Um, I didn't want you to think I didn't, I didn't know what that means. So. No, no, Sorry, go ahead. You're good. Yeah, uh, it was crazy. Um, we, played against, uh, we played against UCF, who for the past three seasons were probably one of our biggest rivals um, domestically in our conference. They always gave us a good fight, and that was always a game that we would always circle on our calendar um, when the schedule came out. So credit to them. They're an amazing team. Um, their coach did a very good job with them, and they always gave us a very, very good battle. Um, it was questionable how we got paired against each other in the Sweet 16 to begin with, um, just of the way the seeding worked and how NCAA put us against each other. Like you shouldn't have been against, seeing each other that early? Yeah, yeah, I really don't think so. But, I mean, you know, it is know. what it is. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the game was tied. They actually scored first. It was Cal Jennings uh, who scored on us in the first few minutes or so. And then we answered back. It was 1-1 at halftime. And then it was 1-1 all the way up until the, the 90th minute. Um, it was a lot of back and forth. And, I mean, we're both – both – us and UCF were both teams that like to play, like to keep possession and stuff. So it was a really good soccer game. Mm -hmm. um, but tied 1-1 at the end of regulation. Yes, tied 1-1. Uh, so then we come in overtime, and I'm thinking, like, the game right before UCF, we also went to overtime. Um, and we stayed in – we did, like, both um, both halves of overtime in that game previous. So I was thinking, here goes, like, another yeah. set of 20 minutes right. or so. Um but, I mean, I was confident we were going to win, whether it was me who scored or whoever. Like, I was pretty confident how we were playing, that we were going to win that game. We're at home. We're in front of our fans. Um, I felt like this is this is our moment. Um, but, yeah, it was it took a matter of, I think it was 18 seconds. Oh, wow. That's overtime. how long. Okay. Yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, you scored. I scored. Yeah, I scored. Uh, one of the center mids 
played me a ball in, and I kind of just ran onto it and shot it far post. And in college, like, the rules work, like, as soon as someone scores in overtime, the game's over. It's over. It's, it's like, like golden, golden goal. goal. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, the celebrations afterwards were crazy. Oh, I bet. Um, so, but you're a defender, yeah? Yes, so I So, is it common? Like, are you the kind of player that's going to go run up and, I mean, I don't know if you, I don't think by looking at you, are you the tallest right. one on the field and that's your role? Or are you right. just, is that your nature? Is that you're going to be playing up in a moment like that? Um, I think for me personally, I think other people in my position probably don't have the same, uh, the same attacking mindset that I have. Okay. Um, I grew up like during the time my dad was coaching me when I was younger, I was an attacking player. Like I was a winger, I was a striker. So I grew up already attack minded. Um, I came into FC Dallas in the academy and they kind of transformed me into an outside back. Okay. But I still kind of had that attacking mindset. Um, so yeah, I brought that with me everywhere I went and I brought it to SMU and um, the goals I scored my senior year were just credit to, you know, kind of my mindset of always wanting to go forward and wanting to attack, even though still doing my defensive duties. Um, I love that. As so, an FC Dallas fan, I'm excited to hear that. That's fun. It's always fun. I mean, obviously, in an you know, extra time win, mm -hmm. but it's it's unexpected when a defender gets to come up and do yeah. that. Like we've seen Ryan Hollingshead get to do that of a few course, times, of and course, yeah. it's always just a fun you know twist. So I'm excited to get to see more of that attacking nature in our back line back Thank there. Thank you. Thank you. I am too. All right. So tell me what um, hashtag FCHW means to you. That is something that. Well, first of all, I think it might be some type of, like, brand or something like that. I'm really not sure. I think it's sure. a thing out there, but yeah. Yeah, but that's just something uh, I really like to live by. Um, I'm, really, I'm really close with my faith. Um, that's something that I value a lot, and I think it's very important, and I just think it's, it's something that has, again, brought me to where I am um, now, just kind of plugging into that. Um, and then consistency is something that I always want to achieve. I think it's something that um, if I can be more consistent, it's not just in soccer, but all years of life, um, just consistent to who I am. I think it's obviously something that will help me be successful. Um, and then hard work, I mean, that just speaks for itself. You can't get anywhere without working hard. And um, obviously that's something that I'm obviously in a position that I am now because of a bunch of hard work. Yeah. So it's a good daily reminder or mm -hmm. however, you know, you use that, but I, I'm not familiar with it. So I mm -hmm. see you tweeting it and I love that FCHW. Yeah. I think that's cool. Okay. So your path has, you know, we've seen it come full circle now. Um, you were the 27th homegrown to sign with FC Dallas and mm -hmm. the 37th Academy player from FC Dallas to go pro in mm -hmm. general. So Dan Hunt says that you are part of this special generation of players that really, you know, in that 17 to 23-year-old kind of range mm -hmm. that was kind of born out of this first round of academy players. So how do you describe this system that you are one of the at the forefront of? I mean, are you speaking like just from FC Dallas standpoint? Yeah, or? I mean, really how it's shaped even, you know, as you went into college and back. But I mean, yeah. you're, you're one of the, the few um, that is, that we've seen follow that path. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just, you know, from your standpoint, how do you see this development in an Academy League? Um, well, I think the Academy League is always something that I think any player, um, kind of going up through middle school, high school, I think that's something that players who want or have those aspirations of being professional, I think that's something that they really consider and they really want to, um, achieve. And I mean, whenever I joined Academy, um, it was something that at the beginning, they actually, they called it pre-Academy at the beginning, whenever it first started with FC Dallas. Like age group what? What's pre? It was U13. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's still the same thing, but yeah. at that time, that's what it was called. And I didn't really know much about it. I had known about FC Dallas Academy at like the older ages of like U16, U18. Mm -hmm. um, but at the beginning, they just called it pre-Academy and, but I started realizing more and more that it's just, it's a system that's trying to, you know, bring players up into developing them into first team players. Um, so I was very thankful to be in that situation. Not many people had that opportunity, not just at FC Dallas, but other MLS clubs as well. Um, when you were coming up through it, you probably didn't know how well we do that here locally right, compared to right. others, right? I mean, right. it's probably not a known thing for 15-year-olds like 
that actually already live here, that this yeah. is one of the best places you could be. Exactly. Yeah. I had, I actually had no idea. Um, I started playing or, perfor- or before coming to uh, FC Dallas Academy, I was with a local club called Andromeda. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, that club kind of like disbanded and um, a lot of us ended up having to go to FC Dallas, but I had no knowledge about what FC Dallas Academy was. I had no idea. At the time, I was just thinking about I was going to stick with my team and we were just going to go to FC Dallas, like the club in general. Mm-hmm. I had no idea like what Academy was. So it was really cool to, you know, join that system. And we had tryouts and everything. And there were a lot of people there that I had played with and played or played with and against throughout like, you know, normal youth leagues growing up. And it right. was nice to like see them again and stuff because everyone is competing for the same thing. So that was obviously a really enjoyable moment. And like I said, being a part of that academy was amazing. And I can't stress enough how much it helped me to be, you know, not only a good player, but a good person as well. Do you have uh, current players that now that you're back, I know it's fresh, you just came back, um, mm-hmm. but do you have anybody that you're playing with now that came through the system locally here with you or any of your old club players uh, still hanging in there with you? I mean, there's still, there's a couple club players, uh, like Reggie, we played together. Oh, you in did? The academy, yeah. Okay. Um, Paxson as well. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, we all played together. Just, th- um, just those two. Yeah. Just you know. <laughs> Brandon Cervania at times. He just would all those play up national team players. Yeah, all the all the great great players right now. Um, yeah, I was fortunate enough to play with them, and obviously at that time it was just us, you know, being buddies. But we were winning championships and doing well for the club's history, as far as the academy level. So that was obviously very you know very enjoyable and very inspirational for the rest of the club as well. So when you when you play with guys like Reggie and Paxi and you said Brandon? Yes, Brandon. Um, I say Paxi. He probably doesn't like that. <laughs> I don't know him well enough to, to have a nickname like that for him on, on the air. But um, when you play with them and then you go off to school, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I know you were only in Dallas, but, like, you're gone from, you know, playing with them on a right. regular basis. Right. Do you keep up with them? Of course. So, like, when it's time for you to come back, I don't know if you always knew you were going to come back, but did you always keep the relationship with those guys? I did for sure. Uh, we had a we had actually a group like a group chat of all of our uh, our last the last U eighteen team that won the national championship. We have a group chat with all of us together. We still keep in touch even now. Um, but as far as Reggie and Pax, I always stayed in touch with them because I kept coming back here in the summer to train with them. Okay. Whenever college was on off season, mm-hmm. so I still kept seeing them at least once a year for a period of time. I never really knew for sure if I was actually going to come back. I knew that was something I wanted to do, but I was never 100% certain because, I mean, you sure. know, the way things work in the soccer world, anything can happen. Right. You never know. The The door might be closed. You just mm-hmm. never know. So if that if it didn't happen, what was your other plan? Uh, the other plan, since I was in college, uh, the other plan was to answer the draft um, and see who, you know, who's willing to take me there. I think after, for sure, my last senior season, I had a good chance to – be taken early um in terms of like the rounds and picks sure. and that thing yeah. but uh yeah like I never like I said I was never 100 percent sure that I was going to come back here but I knew it was something I wanted to do for sure you have teammates from SMU that are going to be uh playing against you like a uh, dynamo maybe uh-huh. right so yes, Garrett. is that going to be that's going to be new for you playing at the pro level with some of your collegiate level teammates of course yeah of course it'll be a lot of fun for sure just seeing them again um, but yeah, playing at some league will be even more enjoyable. And it's not just, uh, Garrett that I played with, but other people I played against during the whole collegiate, uh, three and a half years I was there. It's obviously going to be enjoyable and it's good to see that they're also being successful after leaving the college. Yeah, of course. College level. What number are you going to wear for FC Dallas? I will be wearing 27. 27. 27, yes. Okay. I was curious because I also have to give a shout out to... My husband is the same birthday as you. Oh, really? July 18th, babies, right? Oh, perfect. However, July 18th, when you were born mm-hmm. in 98, you're 21? Yes, I'm 21. Yeah. Um, my husband and I had already met. We met on, literally on a soccer field uh-huh. um, in college. You weren't even born yet. Yeah. And so that next year, in 98, uh-huh. you were born. So 
you instantly have a fan, uh, a big fan at, when you're playing here at FC Dallas, my oh, husband, Ryan. So he'll already, so he will, um, whether you are uh, on the starting 11 or coming in as a sub, we sit over by the, on the corner flag by where the subs warm up. And so uh -huh. you will always hear a big clap and a cheer for you from him because Perfect. you guys are, are birthday buddies. So Perfect. Hopefully you'll get to meet soon. Oh yeah. He's around. He'll, he'll always come up, um, that's FC Dallas is really good about player access to the mm -hmm. fans. Yeah. I mean, we've been season ticket holders for, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years or so. So um, we get to, to go to all those fun things where they allow fans to come meet you guys. So right, meet right. and greets and autograph sessions and uh -huh. um, training. Sometimes we get to go watch training sessions or, you know, preseason games, mm -hmm. all kinds of things. So he will definitely come say hi and shake your hand and remind you that you guys have the same birthday, I'm oh, sure. Oh, perfect. I can't yeah. wait. Well, Eddie, it was really nice to meet you and to get to know you. I love your story, and um, I love that, that it's really full circle for you, and I'm excited to watch you out on the field this season. Thank you. Thank you. I'm always excited to get started, and thank you again for having me. Yeah, so good luck, and we'll be rooting for you. So thank you for joining us today on Hustle & Pro. Make sure you subscribe on iTunes so you can find out about our upcoming episodes. 